Now, in this video, I wanted to give you a brief overview of another one of my most favorite features inside Photoshop, and that is the world of filters. And filters are basically effects that you can apply to your images. Now, uh, some of the most common filters that are used by Photoshop users are the blur and sharpen filters for obvious reasons. But there's a whole host of filters that do all kinds of interesting effects if you just simply go in there and experiment with them. A lot of people tend to dismiss filters because they see the name and it, you know, perhaps it doesn't do something that they expect, so they don't even bother with it. But let me just show you where they are. If you go up into the menu bar up here and you can see the word filter, we click on that and you notice you've got a number of different categories of filters you can choose from. Here are, of course, the uh, numerous blur filters and the sharpen filters that you can choose from that I mentioned a moment ago. But you've got a number of different ones like textures and stylized, uh, artistic and brush stroke filters. All of these can be accessed right by going into any of these menus and you see the flyout and you choose from it. Now, you'll notice that some of these have an ellipsis by them right here and some of them do not. Well, an ellipsis simply ind indicates that you're going to have a dialog box that allows you to modify the settings of this particular filter. If you see a setting that doesn't have an ellipsis on it, like this one right here, that means it has a very definite setting, and when you apply it, it's going to apply it to your image, and that is that. However, if you have an ellipsis, you'd simply go in here and you would choose, let's say we go in here and do a blur. So I'm going to go over here and go to blur and do a Gaussian blur. And it will open up the dialog and you'll get a small preview window which you can click inside and move around so you can see a specific area of your image that you want to see how it is affected. But also by checking on the preview uh, button here you can see that it is taking effect in my full image. And you just simply grab the slider and move the slider to increase or decrease the amount of the effect you want to apply. And then you simply click OK. Now, as I mentioned, all these other filters are going to have very different settings, so you'll want to go in here and perhaps try something new and just see what kind of different settings you get. You know, you'll get a number of different sliders and all various settings like that. Now, another way of accessing these is through the filter gallery. You kind of got a, a brief peek of it just then, but if you go into the filter menu and go right here to filter gallery, it's going to open up that same window. And what this is going to allow you to do is basically preview the filters before you go ahead and apply them. Now notice over here in my preview window that we've got a couple of filters already applied here. Let's actually go ahead and throw this one away. So what we have here is our preview window and in this column right here you've got a number of different categories similar to the categories you saw in the menu here. By twirling these down you actually get small preview icons that show you the result of each one of these filters and by simply clicking on one it will apply it to your image as you can see right over here and it will reveal over here the various settings for that particular filter so you can modify these and adjust them any way you like and then if you like what you see in the filter you simply click OK and it's done now but the cool thing about using the filter gallery here is that you can stack filters on top of each other as I mentioned earlier notice we've got this window over here and we've got the poster edges and we can turn the visibility on and off but we can also go down here to the new icon and click it and add more filters to this so let's say I go in here so right now it's actually doubled up the poster edges but if I got that one highlighted and I go in and choose let's say I do try a dry brush or even cut out and let's increase or decrease the levels of that and you can see it's having an effect on my image altogether if I turn any of these off you'll see it modifies that you can actually change the order if I can take that cut down cut out and put it beneath the poster edges, it'll give me a very different effect altogether. So it allows me to not only apply the filters, but to stack them on top of each other and then rearrange that stacking order. And once I like what I've got, I can simply click OK, and there my effect is already applied. Now, if you have applied an effect, if you go into the filter menu, you'll notice the very first item right here. This is the very last thing you applied. So let's say I went in here and I went and did a... Uh, let's do something crazy. Let's do the chrome. So I went in there and I did my chrome effect. And I wanted to apply that again, perhaps. That's really ugly. Let's do something more, a little bit more appealing. We'll go to the artistic and we'll do, maybe put a, apply a grain to this. There we go. And we'll just increase that highlight area. And I'll click OK. Now, if I wanted to apply that filter again, let's say I applied it and I want to intensify it by applying that filter again, I would simply go into the filter menu and choose that very first item. It indicates the last filter you applied. And by selecting it again, we'll simply apply that filter with those same settings all over again. Or you can simply use the keyboard shortcut, Command or Control F. And you'll notice it'll intensify that effect even more. So another way of managing your filters. But 
that's pretty much it. I know that in, it's kind of a simple explanation, but uh, trust me, you can spend a tremendous amount of time into these filters and doing all kinds of combinations and just experimenting with different settings. And, and, and another thing, experiment on different images. Now, I've, of course, I've got this one image here, and I've tried several different things, and it's looking pretty cool. But some filters are going to look work well with other images, and some images are not going to work so well. So you're going to want to experiment not just with different filters, but with different images as well, and just get a really good idea of what they do and how they work. And mess with the settings. When you're inside of a filter, if I'm inside the film grain here, go in here and just try different things. Try and push this highlight all the way up. Push it all the way down. You never know what it's going to do. I've seen too many people do write books and tutorials and they'll say here's a very specific way you need to use this filter and there's no other way don't listen to that go in there and just try different things you're bound to discover effects that you never ever considered before i've seen people go off and perhaps even spend a few you know several uh even a few hundred bucks on plugins that do very specific functions inside photoshop and only come to find out that later on you could have done that entire effect all the while inside Photoshop just by experimenting with a few filters. So extraordinarily powerful resource for effects inside Photoshop, and I do encourage you to experiment with them as much as you can, and most of all, have fun with it.